This episode of Casual Friday is brought to you by Netflix. Pants, who cares? They all look the same anyway. It's just jeans. Yeah. And they say, just get me the same pair of jeans. <laughs> it's just like, it's so... So, all right. Game of the year. We did it. We got them out. Yes. I, well, yours isn't... It'll be out by the time this video comes out, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what your picks are. It's a really no really. I mean, I know what some of them are. I don't I mean, know like what order. No, I'm not. I mean, it's not state. Last I talked to you about it, you were still in the process of playing some of the games. So yeah, no, it was. It, it came out kind of how I thought. I mean, look, I I, I, I did the thing where I said Gone Home was my favorite. Fucking hipster. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I know. I'm, Speaking I'm, of, yeah. I think you're right. Am I going to be called a hipster? You're, oh yes. <laughs> by the time this Casual Friday goes up. There, there is a hipster cloak that has been yeah, well, covering remember, Adam Sessler. You're the one wearing one of my favorite games, one of yours, Brothers. When I was just, you know, I, I was just so blown away by that game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I went to Twitter to just express my admiration for it because, you know, Microsoft did a bang up job making sure no one knew it was out there. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And people were accusing me. Like I was chatting with Gary Weta, who also really enjoyed the game, and they're like, "You better not make that your game of the year. You need to pick a real game, you hipster." And it's like what? Right, right now, if someone calls me a hipster. I mean, it's a compliment. I, I, it's I get ten years back. It's literally <laughs> it's just incredible. a catch-all term now to describe someone who disagrees. Yeah, with I mean, you. apparently now not liking anything that's mainstream. But anyway, but I, I think the thing is, hipster or not, the cool part about Gone Home that really got me was. The story is the design, and the design is the story in ways that are very hard to accomplish in games. You know, it's not even just, it, it doesn't stop down and it does the Half-Life thing, mm -hmm. but the way in which that house had to be constructed for you to kind of traverse oh, yeah. it, to put everything together, yeah. it's just, it's, that really is a phenomenal feat. Yeah, it was meticulously laid out. And I said in my Game of the Year video, I was talking about Gone Home and how, you know, there are like habits we form as gamers that we don't even realize. Like, I mean, hopefully I'm not spoiling anything, but parts of that game are really scary. And really you scary. feel like you should be scared, even though the game hasn't actually given you a reason to be scared. Yeah. yeah. Like dark hallways, boom, that's automatically terrifying. Yeah. Well, it, it is also that sense that you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. And I, th I think that's probably the greatest trick it played is, even though the character you are playing is familiar with the family, they're not familiar with the house. And yeah. so you have this parody between player and character. Mm -hmm. But it reminds me of the movies of, of, of Michael Haneke, who recently did Amour and did Funny Games, where so many of his movies, you as the viewer feel you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. And right. just that kind of lingering feeling. Yeah. And that's where I think so much of the fear came from. Yeah, it's just anxiety. Through that door, I'm just, mm -hmm. And I did scream while playing it, not because of something that happened in the game, but there was a gust of air that slammed the door in my uh -huh. apartment. Oh God. I'm so glad I was home alone <laughs> because that was not a masculine sound that yeah. came out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm imagining like a <laughs> banshee shriek or something. <laughs> it was really, really bad. It's a shame your playthrough wasn't on like Twitch at the time. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really glad that didn't happen. What, what, what was your game of the year? Again? My game of the year was Bioshock Infinite, which apparently some people are mad about. <laughs> a hipster. I don't, shut your mouth, Zach. Casual, I don't want to hear it. Casual. You sound like the internet. Tara, Tara, I, 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 I have to concur. I mean, that, that, that game is on my list, you know, just, you know, because I, I say Gone Home was the best and then I alphabetized everything yeah. else because I'm just not in the mood to rank things because just, games are great. I feel like everybody, almost everybody loved Bioshock Infinite when it came out and now that it's been like nine months or something, is it like cool to start hating it again it or something? It took a week for it to be cool to start, or less than that. It took like, I think I mean, it, okay, I, I understand there were like legitimate discussions about ludonarrative dissonance yeah. and all this shit, but like, even with that, you can't argue that it's a really no, it well-made game. It's also, it is really one of the most remarkable acts of pop entertainment. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. the imagination of Columbia. Yeah. And that it never, that sense of discovery of that world never got boring. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it, it's, I feel uh, like the kind of people who are saying that they hate that are people who maybe play three games regularly, which is probably something like Dark Souls and like hardcore games and mm -hmm. anything else they just completely dismiss. But I mean, Dark Souls. it's, it's <laughs> no, Dark Souls is a fine game. No, I just, Bioshock Infinite also, 
I will never forget the experience of playing that game. Yeah, like you and I both played it. We crammed through it the weekend before it came out yeah. for the review. And that, being able to play that in a vacuum before any of the reviews, except for IGN, were out, <laughs> was kind of a, like a magical experience. Yeah. Like, like coming across that ending when you had no idea what was gonna yeah. happen was crazy. And it's like, nobody else has played it, so you wanna talk to somebody else about it, yeah. but yeah. you can't. Yeah, it was, but, yeah. the way, as, as tough as some of the subject matter was, the way in which that game played out, it's like when you heard that, it was, it was like a cool glass of water. Mm -hmm. It's that once I started playing, I had, you know, it was just like when fatigue caught up with me. I'm like, okay, I gotta go to bed because I'm mm -hmm. not appreciating this. Up the next morning, I just kept on going. So yeah, I crammed it, yeah. but I think even if I wasn't reviewing it, I would have played it. It just, it yeah. doesn't want to let you go. Exactly. I, I loved it. I feel like there were a couple sequences where I wanted to put it down. Like there are some backtrack yeah. sections and some parts in the middle when you're, um, when you're around, was it Chen's like gun shop that felt like, okay, I feel like I'm mm -hmm. kind of going through the motions here. Like, it, it seems like they tried to fill this section out. But for the most part, I agree with you. Like it was, I was, I strapped into that roller coaster and I wanted to keep on going. Yeah. Although I mentioned this, I wonder what you think about this. Um, I feel like there is too many critical story elements that are told through hidden audio diaries. Like I think that there is, they came up with this story and they decided, okay, here's our mainline story, here's everything else that's optional. Mm -hmm. And I think they put too much stuff in the optional. Like, I mean, really? even spoiled games that we shot yeah. a week later, there were things that were like, well, I don't know, this is better left unexplained, but it's explained in some hidden audio diary. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm glad I didn't find all the audio diaries because I like some of the ambiguity yeah. hmm. that, that, that's, that's, that that's in it because that's what made it so kind of fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, but that's, that, that's, I mean, that, that was also something that happened in the original Bioshock yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not my favorite storytelling device because... Well, Gone Home is your <laughs> game of the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I know, but I mean, it's like, like I said, I just, I, I really like Bioshock Infinite, and I'm going to say it, I really like the combat. I really like Damn. it too. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what I'm saying, like, people who are hating on it, like... That's have, fun. They I haven't played it, that much stuff if they really think that that is bad. Like, yeah. get some perspective. I played Aliens Colonial Marines this year. <laughs> I played God of War Ascension yeah. in Gears of War Unfriendliness, what was it called? Gears of War Judgment Day? Judgment. Or Judges? Ju judgment. Judges? Judge of War. Judges anyway. Week. Judge okay, and what was your game of the year? The Last of Us. Last of Us, yeah. Which See, is the know. true and supreme <laughs> master of the Game of the Year awards. So there are a lot of comments on my agree. Game of the Year video because I didn't include The Last of Us. Right. Even though I specifically stated there are tons of great games that aren't on this list, this is just what spoke to me. But I played The Last of Us. I felt like it suffered from that thing where it's like, it's really slow in the first few hours of the game. And that made me sort of get bored with it. And because I wasn't playing it for a review, I didn't feel compelled. You're playing it for pleasure? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, well, I was, game, I was playing it uh, for game of the year consideration because mm -hmm. I hadn't played it when it came out. And I just like, I was like, this is good. I don't feel compelled to finish it. Yeah. The, the one thing is when we chatted about this, because I, I, I did the review on that one, and not because I got bored, because I actually was quite compelled by mm -hmm. it, but. The, the grimness, which I think is even more present at the beginning than, than even at the end, or at least as you're adjusting to just how yeah. heavy this world is, I think I would have stepped away from that game far more frequently, you know, had I not had the time pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There was there were points in that game that I wanted to stop playing, and I knew that this is a long game and I need to finish it this weekend, that yeah. it forced me to keep on going. But, so... Were you dying a lot in the beginning? No, no I didn't die a lot. Mm. I didn't. Die. I don't think I died once. Because I found, like, I find the intro sequence I think is brilliant and just grabs me and like that made me want to keep playing and you know exploring, learning mm. what this character was like after this tr terrible event. Yeah. And the world itself was so unfamiliar, even though it was post-apocalyptic. And we've seen a lot of games that year or this, uh, this year in, in that genre. Um, that it just it forced me to want to keep exploring that world, and yeah, I mean, once you meet Ellie and you know you kind of leave, uh, is it Boston that you start out in? Boston, Boston, yeah. Um, then I think the game really takes off. Yeah. I agree that like up up to that point, before you get to Bill's Town, things are a little bit slow. Yeah. It tutorializes a lot of combat, um, but man, after that, I think there was no better written game this year, no better performed really? game this year. Huh. Um, I. 
I mean, I, 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 I mean, I think, especially on the on, on the writing on this one, it was fairly early on when I realized, oh, okay, Joel's not a good guy. Exactly. And the beginning sets it up where you immediately have sympathies for him. Mm -hmm. His daughter's dead. Yeah. But then I'm like, hold on, this is kind of, you know, it reminded me a little bit of the Vic Mackey character on The Shield, where he's almost exploiting his own tragedy to indulge some rather unsavory aspects of his person, hmm. which is, I just, I just, I increasingly found him a sociopath that seemed to be further and further detached from what he ostensibly was claiming, what he was supposed to be doing, which was saving the world or saving the girl. Yeah, and maybe that's what initially threw me off, because I, I was, expecting him to be a good guy yeah. and I started playing and I realized that he really well, wasn't well then, and I was like well who, who is the good character you know um, I mean it, 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 it's it's Ellie for the most part yeah, yeah but, I mean, but I, yeah a major theme of that game is that humanity is terrible yeah right? but, but, but the scene with who's the girlfriend in the beginning um, Tess yes Tess when she just cold-bloodedly just shoots the guy that yeah. was the like Oh, this game's going places I wasn't expecting yeah. it to, and I, I, it's almost—I almost wondered if that was Naughty Dog saying, "Like, okay, we've warned you. Yeah. <laughs> this is not going to be." I mean, a it's, 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 yeah. it's rough going. Yeah, but yeah. I but, still don't believe that was Troy Baker. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, oh my God! Yeah, his voice is so deep. Yeah. And Booker it, DeWitt. And, and the Joker. <laughs> and they shared an art director, right? Oh, that's what he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They both had kind of the, the, the younger female companion. Mm -hmm. They're basically the same thing, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But so. obviously one is better than the other. Yes, by We can both infinite. agree on that, right, Adam? Of course. I mean, you have to decide. Well, we're, we're not deciding, we're not deciding Gone Home as the game, of the, the, the game of the year. Well, I mean, but they're both on my list and I didn't do the ranking. They're both really good games. Well, but I guess I'd have to say, you know, 